Biofabrication is a powerful new scientific research area, and in the next few years, it will revolutionize healthcare as we know it. As we speak, biofabrication researchers all around the world are using 3D printing to create human body parts. And not just models or prosthetics, they're creating fully functional biological structures which will be able to repair, replace, and restore entire human tissues and organs. They will be custom made to the exact shape and size to fit each individual person. So let's meet John here, who unfortunately has had a terrible bicycle accident. Using medical scanning, a 3D model of John's injury can be created on the computer. This is then sent to a specialized biofabrication 3D printer. A scaffold can now be made, layer by layer, which will mechanically support the injury as it heals. Also, a patient's own cells can be added to the scaffold. That way, the cells will start to grow inside the construct and replace the tissue. Once the scaffold is implanted back into John, the cells will start to restore the lost bone and the scaffold will dissolve over time. In just a few years, John's injury will be completely mended. And that's just one of the ways that we hope biofabrication will revolutionize the treatment of not only injuries such as John's, but also organ failure and tissue loss as a result of genetic birth defects, injuries, or diseases like cancer. So biofabrication is a brand new research field, just a child really in the family tree of scientific disciplines. In fact, it's basically the baby of three pre-existing research fields. Tissue engineering and regenerative medicine have largely the same goals as biofabrication, but they focus on the biological construction of tissues using cells and biological molecules seeded onto prefabricated scaffolds or matrices, and together these grow and develop into biological structures. In parallel, 3D printing has been rapidly growing in popularity in a wide range of industries around the world. Architects are using 3D printing to create scale models of their designs, while even NASA are using specialized metal 3D printers to create parts for their rocket engines. There are a number of aspects of 3D printing which are most attractive to tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, and have driven the crossover of 3D printing into the field of biofabrication. 3D printing as a layer-by-layer -layer technique has the ability to fabricate fine detail, both on the inside and the outside of a structure. Interlocking parts can be made in one go without the need for further assembly. And most importantly, 3D printing is an additive technique. So only the exact amount of material required for a structure is added and this saves material wastage. So to create a 3D printed object, you first need a computer model. This can be based on drawings, such as engineering sketches, or else imaging data from a camera. In biofabrication, medical scan data is used to create and design the implants. What this means is that each part that's printed can be customized and planned before it is sent to the 3D printer. These research fields have converged at the optimal time into this exciting multidisciplinary research field which has made massive advances in just the last decade. In the future, we hope that this technology will be available in hospitals all around the world to create functional, on-demand, 3D printed human tissues and organs for rapid transplantation to treat a wide range of defects. In America, Nearly 120,000 people are currently listed on the organ transplant waiting list. Each of these people requires a life-saving organ, a heart, a liver, or a kidney, to replace theirs which might be damaged or diseased. But last year, only 31,000 transplants were performed. In fact, 22 people on the waiting lists die every day where they couldn't get the life-saving organ donation they needed. 
So how can biofabrication help? Imagine a future where in every hospital and surgery room around the world, a 3D printer is installed, ready to fabricate a personalized heart, a lung, or a pancreas for every patient who needs one. In 2011, Professor Anthony Atala famously 3D printed a human kidney live on stage during his TED presentation. This is such a fantastic example of some of the research being done around the world to make this vision a reality. Like John from our earlier example, many people around the world suffer from significant tissue loss. Many patients who are diagnosed with certain types of cancer may have to have large portions of tissue removed to destroy the cancer and to prevent the further spread of disease. For example, people diagnosed with breast cancer may have to have large amounts of breast tissue removed or else bone in the case of bone cancer. In the future, we hope these patients will have access to personalized 3D printed pieces of tissue. These scaffolds will restore the lost tissue and completely heal these patients' defects. Now, this is not only important for the functionality of tissues, like bones, for example, which must be strong and healthy so we can move. But the psychological effects of tissue loss can have a major impact on a person's mental health, their confidence, and their sense of identity. Particularly for more visible defects, like those in the facial region, having the ability to completely restore these defects using patient-specific materials may have an enormous impact on a patient's quality of life. Another example of how biofabrication is going to have such a major impact is the treatment of joint conditions. Many of us in this room might know someone, maybe a parent or a grandparent, who has had to have a knee or a hip replacement. In many cases, this operation is performed as a result of a degenerative condition which affects the cartilage in our joints. Cartilage is the strong, slippery substance which helps our joints move smoothly. But in the cases where the cartilage is so damaged, the entire joint has to be replaced with large metal implants. In the future, biofabrication researchers hope that these patients will be able to receive a 3D printed piece of cartilage tissue. This scaffold will restore this slippery joint coating and leave the patients with fully functioning joints again. So now we can see how biofabrication is going to have such a major impact on healthcare. We hope it will save lives, provide an immediate answer for patients who require an organ donation, and improve the quality of care of those suffering from diseases or trauma. So you might be wondering where I fit into the picture of biofabrication research. I've been studying biofabrication for two years now in a specialized master's program. I've come here to Germany, all the way from Australia, to study in one of the foremost labs in the world, to develop new ways to 3D print bone and cartilage tissues. But I'm not a biologist, or a chemist, or a medical doctor. I have a physics degree. So what can I possibly bring to the table in a biofabrication lab? Here in Würzburg, I've learned something pretty crucial to studying biofabrication. Most biologists don't know how to write code, which is the language 3D printers speak. But most physicists and mathematicians don't have a clue how to keep cells alive. I don't know how to synthesize new materials to suspend and sustain cells in complex polymer networks, but my co chemistry colleagues need my help to program our 3D printer to dispense multiple materials at the same time to create complex tissue structures. It is this multidisciplinary approach to biofabrication research, which I believe is the reason why the field has developed so rapidly and will drive biofabrication research into the future. So here's a typical day in the lab here at the University of Würzburg. My current research project is to 3D print cartilage scaffolds to ultimately improve joint function. To do this, I use a specialized biofabrication 3D printer which can first print a mechanical scaffold made out of a biodegradable, biocompatible polymer, 
And in the pores, a specialised material called a hydrogel is deposited that can contain the patient's own cells. So to do this research, I work very closely with a number of other team members. Firstly, biologists extract and carefully grow cartilage cells. These are then loaded into a hydrogel, which is made by chemists. I then take this hydrogel and load it into our 3D bioprinter to first make that mechanical support structure and then in the pores, the hydrogel containing cells. Ultimately, the cells would grow throughout the scaffold and it would turn into functional cartilage tissue. It's my job to make sure that the 3D printer prints this construct correctly. I need to make sure that enough hydrogel completely fills the pores, that the entire construct is mechanically strong enough to withstand the forces in a human leg, and that the cells survive the printing process. Studying biofabrication is not only applying my physics and maths training, but also learning and adapting to working with other scientists and engineers who each have their own unique perspective and approach to solving some of these complex challenges. So biofabrication has made massive leaps forward in just the last decade. And now we have all of the equipment we need to tackle some of the biggest healthcare challenges in the world. But there are still a number of hurdles to overcome. I'd like to talk about three major challenges which we face in biofabrication before this technology can be introduced into routine clinical use. The first of these challenges is the concept of vascularization. This is the blood supply network that connects all of our tissues and organs in our body. Virtually all tissues and organs have to be connected to this blood supply to make sure that the cells are fed and that waste can be removed away. And this holds true for biofabricated constructs as well. They also have to be connected to this blood supply to make sure that the cells get the nutrients they need to regrow. A good example of a solution to this problem requires the input from all of these science and engineering disciplines I've been talking about. New 3D printers developed by engineers have the ability to fabricate a fine network of tubes throughout a biofabricated construct. In these tubes, special cells can grow and develop into blood vessels. The material that was printed can then be washed out of the structure, and this leaves a fine network of pores all the way through the construct which would then be connected to the blood supply. Moving forward, it is this continued multidisciplinary approach to biofabrication, which is one of the key reasons why the field has developed so rapidly. Using this collaborative approach, we see how each piece of the puzzle is being developed in parallel to propel this technology towards routine clinical use. The second major challenge I'd like to talk about extends outside of the science lab the legal framework for the regulation of medical devices and materials and technologies. Biofabrication has made substantial progress towards clinical trials, but this technology will never be able to be used in hospitals without the approval of the governing agencies such as the European Commission or the Food and Drug Administration in America, who closely control and regulate the use of materials, uh, treatment options, um, tools and devices to make sure that they're used in a safe and appropriate manner. Until now, medical device regulation hasn't had to deal with the concept of 3D printed constructs, which also contain a patient's own biological materials. In fact, biofabrication falls right through the cracks of the existing legal framework. World-leading biofabrication researchers have identified this as one of the key challenges which could disrupt the translation of biofabrication into routine clinical use. This, this uh, challenge is being tackled by researchers and medical device companies in collaboration with politicians, policymakers, governing agencies and lawyers. The final challenge I'd like to talk to you about is an ethical challenge. Let's say in 10 years time, we have the ability to fabricate any human tissue or organ, and it will completely restore the function of the damaged tissue or organ. Now, let's say after an accident, I need a new pair of lungs. 
But maybe I don't want replacement ones like my old lungs. Maybe they didn't work very well or I had asthma. Maybe I'd like better lungs. Lungs like Michael Phelps, which will let me hold my breath longer and pump more oxygen through my body. Or what about lungs even better than that? What if we can create muscles which are twice as strong, hearts which never fail, or unbreakable bones? The question is, how do we define being human? And do we have the right to not just replace and restore, but also improve the function of human tissues and organs using biofabrication? This is a question I certainly don't know the answer to but is a considerable ethical issue for future generations to tackle. Until then, we hope the power of biofabrication research will bring us the ability to treat everyone on the organ transplant waiting lists, mend diseased bones and cartilage, and restore the function of joints, nerves, and muscles to ultimately improve and save the lives of millions of people around the world. Thank you.